All right, so Google I.O. 2025 just happened, and as you can imagine, a ton of AI news came out of it, like a lot, instead of trying to cover every single announcement. I'm going to filter this down to what I think are the most significant and genuinely cool advancements that are likely to be the most impactful for developers, creators, and even just everyday users. Let's start with the core. Google's Gemini models got some pretty massive upgrades. First up, if you're a developer, you'll want to pay attention to Gemini Diffusion. We all know AI can generate code, but sometimes it feels a bit slow. Well, Gemini Diffusion uses that image generation tech, Diffusion, for code. And they're saying it's 10 to 15 times faster. We saw examples of people building simple apps in literal seconds. That's a big jump in productivity right there. Then there's Gemini 2.5 Pro, which already was a strong model, now has something called Deep Think Mode. What this means is instead of just giving you the first good answer it finds, it actually explores multiple ideas or hypotheses before responding. This is making it incredibly good at tackling really complex math problems and intricate coding tasks. We're talking top of the charts performance on some tough benchmarks. And for everyday stuff, Gemini 2.5 Flash, their lightweight, super fast model is now the default for many free experiences. So more power, more accessible. That's the trend. Now, moving over to the creative side of things, because there were some wild updates here. VO3 is their new generative video model, and this isn't just slightly better AI video, we're talking photorealistic quality. But the really interesting part, it can generate its own soundtracks, create talking characters with lip sync, and maintain consistent styles. Paired with a new tool called Flow, which gives you actual filmmaking controls like camera angles and scene building, it's basically an AI-powered film studio. The implications for content creation are pretty huge. And for still images, Imagen 4 was announced. Google's focusing on richer colors, finer texture rendering, more detail, and something that's been a weak point for many AI image generators. Good typography. So, text in images should actually look clean and be spelled correctly. It's already competitive with other top image models, especially when you factor in speed. So how does all this AI start showing up in the Google products you use every day? Well, Google Meet is getting real-time translation powered by multimodal AI. The idea is to pretty much eliminate language barriers in video calls, which is a massive step for global communication. And Google Search is undergoing a big shift. The classic 10 blue links page is evolving. AI mode is rolling out widely in the US, meaning you'll get more comprehensive AI generated answers directly within the search results. They're also adding a deep search feature for when you need the AI to really dig into a topic and give you a detailed report. It's a different way of finding information. And speaking of how AI is changing search, they're also bringing a lot more AI into the online shopping experience. With this AI mode, you can now have a more conversational way to find products. But probably the most eye-catching shopping announcement was the new virtual try-on feature. You can upload a full-length photo of yourself and then see how different clothes, shirts, pants, even dresses would actually look on your body. For developers, there's also jewels. Think of it as an AI software engineering assistant. You can give it English prompts to make changes to your GitHub repositories without even needing to clone the repo to your machine. It uses Gemini 2.5 Pro and aims to simplify tasks like fixing bugs or implementing small features. Now, Google seems to be tying all these threads together into what they're essentially positioning as an AI-driven operating system, all centered around Gemini. You've got Gemini Live, which is coming to Android and iOS for free. The idea is you can point your phone's camera at something and talk to Gemini about it in real time. It integrates with maps, calendar, and tasks, so it could help with planning, shopping, or even figuring out how to fix something. Then there's Canvas, a new creative workspace. You can use text prompts to generate code, quizzes, infographics, even podcasts, all leveraging Gemini 2.5 Pro. Gemini is also being integrated directly into the Chrome browser. It'll be able to summarize articles, answer questions about what you're browsing, and down the line, they're looking at it automating browser tasks for you. And for learning, they showed off interactive quizzes. You can ask Gemini to create a quiz on a specific topic. It'll give you questions, feedback, and even tailor follow-up quizzes. This all seems to be building towards something they're calling agent mode. The concept is you give Gemini a goal, like find and book an apartment for me. And the AI would then break down that task. 
browse listings, shortlist options, and potentially even contact agents. And a big piece of how this agent mode will actually work seems to be something called Project Mariner. That's a glimpse into more autonomous AI. And just to give you a sense of scale, Google mentioned Gemini already has over 400 million monthly active users and is processing an enormous amount of data, 480 trillion tokens a month, which is a 50x increase year over year. This isn't just experimental tech anymore. It's being deployed broadly. They're also offering Google AI Pro and Ultra subscription plans for users and businesses that want access to the most advanced features and models like VO3 and DeepThink. So overall, this Google I.O. was more about a full-scale push into an AI-integrated future. They're clearly aiming to make AI foundational to pretty much everything they do. It's a lot to take in, but many of these tools and features will start rolling out soon, and it'll be interesting to see how they change the way we work and use technology. If you found this useful, like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.